and welcome back to my channel. Now I know I don't really put up a ton of stuff on my YouTube channel anymore, mostly because I spend a lot of my time conversing with you guys over on Facebook. However, I think I've solved this problem uh, by you know, trying to make sure that both, or the video goes on both platforms. So what I'll be doing, at least for the time being, is I'll be going live on Facebook and that announcement gets made, I, get, I send it out to emails, and if you follow me on social media, I kinda do a blast of when I'm going live because it allows me to interact with everybody and answer questions in real time and all that, but then I will take that recording and also put it up on my YouTube channel and that way for you guys who are subscribed to me here, you you can still find the content and, and interact just in a different way. So the way I'll be recording this is that you'll see me kind of looking down at the screen a lot because I'll be talking to, to real life people, but you'll still get the content and then I will also put uh, a way for you to download the audio um, below in the description box as well because sometimes people like to listen on the go. So hopefully this solves the issue and <laughs> people stop emailing me asking me why I'm not putting stuff up on my uh, YouTube channel. I'll be putting up some other things too that are YouTube specific, but definitely for some of these longer conversation pieces, I just wanted to make it available to all of my subscribers and my friends and my family everywhere. So a lot of the times I talk to people and they tell me all about their dreams and all about their vision and what it is they wanna do with their life. Um, but they also come back around and say, you know, but my parents don't support this or my spouse doesn't support this or somebody laughed at me or they don't think that I should do this. They think I should get a real job or whatever the case is. And this is something, uh, while mine wasn't, isn't really that extreme, I do think that there is a conversation that needs to be had about how we allow other people to affect what it is we do with our life and what are you supposed to do when people around you just don't get it. So that's what this conversation is gonna be about. If you're interested in watching the full length, I know it's quite long, uh, then you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and thumbs up this video if you like it. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it as well. Like, is this something you've experienced in your life? Do you have big dreams and big vision that you're afraid to, to talk about with other people because you feel like they're going to laugh at you or look at you sideways or whatever the case is? I would love to know, um, just so that we can keep the conversation going and so I know how to best help you and you know hopefully help you navigate through some of those weird dynamics that we may have with the different relationships in our life. So. Uh, yeah, so the rest of the video we'll be talking about that and I will see you guys very soon. Uh, but we're going to talk about something today. Hi guys. Hey, Shanita. So um, inside of my Facebook group, I said, okay, which of these two do you guys want to talk about today? Right? I said, um, do you want to talk about um, like business stuff, like business tips? I was going to give some tips on uh, positioning. Uh, you know, and then I said, or we can talk about some, some personal things. And I said, how to deal with people who just don't get it. They don't, they don't get the vision. They don't understand where it is you're trying to go. And so, yeah. So, um, you guys said that number two was the option you want to talk about, but a lot of people said they wanted both. So, um, maybe tomorrow or yeah, maybe tomorrow I'll pop back in and I'll talk about, um, the brand positioning and stuff like that. All right. So here's, here's what's happening. A lot of times people just don't understand the vision. I think that's, that's really what it boils down to is that you'll tell people, Hey, hi, Nadia. You'll tell people, Hey, you know, I want to do this. or this is what I want to do with my life. I want to start a business. I want to jump off a cliff. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, hi, Isaiah. Thank you. Um, hey, I'm going to do this. And then people just, they don't get it. They'll laugh at you. They will ridicule you. They'll say, why don't you just get like a real job? Um, you know, whatever snide comment they will give you uh, just to, you know, to, to negate everything that you're wanting to do. Hey, Larissa. Uh, and I think that that's, that's common. I've had this um, conversation a lot. Uh, even this week, I had a couple of people who said, you know, my spouse doesn't support what it is I'm doing. Some people said, um, you know, my, my parents, they don't support this. My sister, my brother, they don't support what I'm doing. They keep saying, just get a job. Hey, Jessica, they just, just get a job. Just, um, you know, they don't get it. Now, I do want to make it very clear that sometimes there, there are two different ways. And I feel like I may be all over the place <laughs> with this um, conversation. But hey, LaDuena, um, so I may be all over the place. Just bear with me because I promise that I'll get to the five steps to dealing with people like this in your life. But there, there could be two different things here, right? The first one, um, you have to identify whether or not this is projection or whether or not it's really happening. Because sometimes we will perceive something in ourselves. Ooh, it is raining. Sometimes we'll perceive something in ourselves, um, but then we think that other people think it too, but that's not really the case, 
right? And, and this happens sometimes to me as well. Like I'll be like, I think this person thinks that I'm this. Uh, and then I'll walk through, I'll walk through the conversation or whatever. And I'll be like, no, no, that, that wasn't them. That was definitely me. So sometimes it's projection and we have to identify, okay, is this just, is this me like thinking this or is this really what they've said? Now I've also had the converse happen where I'll say something like, this is what I want to do. Um, and then I've had people laugh in my face, like in the beginning of my business, before I ever even started my business, I, I remember a time uh, where a good friend of mine, um, you know, laughed and laughed and walked out of the room. Actually, it was, it was dramatic, <laughs> um, but it, it didn't stop me because I was like, okay, listen, you will laugh now, but <laughs> we'll see what happens um, because I'm also very like disciplined with what it is I want to do. And if I say I'm going to do something, um, I make it a point to do it. My commitment level is very high. All right. So I think it's natural for people to want to belong. I think that is a social psychology thing. Like we want to naturally belong. Um, you know, we want to have other people approve because it, it increases our own self-worth. It increases our level of self-esteem when other people are, I guess, affirming those things in us. And this is why social media can get a little bit dicey. Um, even when it comes to your business, because usually Hey, Kim. Hey, Anadia. Hey, Erica. Um, usually when it comes to social media, people are posting, but they're only posting things that they want other people to see. Like they, they're portraying themselves in a certain light and wanting other people to buy into that light as well. Right. This is, I mean, this is normal. This is why uh, sometimes I really like posting on my Instagram stories because I feel like you get to see a lot of the behind the scenes. You get to see me with no makeup on. You get to see me when I'm frustrated. You get to see me when I'm, you know, a little bit stressed out or what have you, because everything isn't just like the pretty picture that gets posted on my Instagram feed or whatever. Right. And so people are very cautious about what they put on social media. Uh, and having said that, some people are wary completely and they don't want to put anything on social media um, because there's a feeling like they're going to be found out, like somebody's going to find me out. They're going to, there's this, you know, I feel like a fraud or they're going to think that this is not real and they start to get in their minds about it. So let's talk about um, when it comes to people in your life who aren't really, I'm not talking about the strangers on social media. I'm talking about the people that are actually in your real life. Hey, Malachi. Hey, uh, Greece. Hey, Carly, who are in your real life, who are saying, you know what? Um, no, I don't, I don't think you should do that or whatever. Uh, and the truth of the matter is that's not actually an issue. It's not an issue until, um, you amplify it to the point where you care about that more than you care about your own intuition, more than you care about the vision that you've been given or the dream that you have or whatever, um, message divine intelligence has inspired inside of you. That's when it really matters. And that's really when, I think people start to, to get a little bit um, in a space of, I don't know if I can do this because other people aren't supporting it, right? And so you start to question yourself, like, did I, you, because when somebody, when you have a dream, this is not the Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech, but when you have a dream or a vision in your heart and it's something that you want to do and you're so excited about it and then you share it with somebody and then they go, no, I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Right. And, and all of a sudden you feel deflated. You're like, but, but what do you, because you think if you got the idea, then of course everybody else in your life should also be excited about that idea as well. Right. But that's not typically the case. And I've learned this a lot. And in myself, let me just tell you what I've been going through recently, because, um, as you elevate, like, let me explain, as you elevate your life or your brand or whatever the case is, there are going to be these times where, you know, I call them little gut checks. Like this is a gut check. This is a, are you serious? Like, do you really believe this? Like, um, you know, are you that connected with God that you feel like, you know, like, do you really feel like this is, this is from him or are you just in your own space or whatever? Right. And so I'm finding that I'm having to deal with, um, the realization that, and I've been going through this for years, by the way, I would say I've been going through this since I was like, in my teens, um, but I think it's really coming to a head now that I'm like really in my business. Because when you operate at a certain level, um, a lot of the times it is in the precision of how you operate there that matters, right? So it's not, I don't have to worry about like doing something or discipline or commitment. Like I'm committed to my business, obviously. This is what I do every single day. I'm committed to this. Um, but it's now in the precision of fine tuning how I think and what I think and what I'm experiencing whenever I'm out and about. Because I find that um, I just come to the realization that 90% of people do not think, act, or speak like I do. Um, 
that all of my opinions are going to be in the minority of opinions in the world. Uh, and and I, that is just what it is. And I've, I've accepted it. Um, and there was a period of time in the last several weeks that I've been noticing that I felt like I had to justify myself or justify my position. Uh, and if you know me, one, I don't like doing that. Like, I don't like really having to explain myself or explain my decisions. Um, however, hey, Whitney. However, I was finding that because sometimes people will say something to me and I'll be like, oh, okay, cool. And then they'll be like, well, what do you think? And then if you ask me what I think, I'm not going to lie because <laughs> now I'm telling you. Now I'm telling you exactly what I think. Thanks for the hearts, Wit. Um, and when I say what I think, it, two reactions will happen. Uh, there's the pushback. Um, it, that's when I feel like I start to need to justify myself. So I'll come back to that. Or people will start changing their opinion. Um, based off of what I said. So I don't know if I'm just that persuasive or, um, the, or you know, what I said clicked in them. I'm not exactly sure. But the first one with the justification, I was finding that people would say something. They'd say, well, what do you think? I'd tell them. And then they'd try and push back. And then I would feel the need to justify why I was saying what I was saying. And I realized that that's not really what I should do. Like, because the truth of the matter is, is that what is normal to me um, may not be normal as a matter of fact, it is not normal to 99% of the people in my life. And, and I have accepted it. I, what is normal to me? Um, yeah, it's, it's very different. And I've realized that I do not have to contextualize my normal to appease somebody else, right? Because everything that is normal to me, having, having said that, everything that is normal to me is a truth and a belief that I hold for everyone. It isn't, I am not, and I say this all the time, I'm not a special snowflake. The things that I've been able to do, the things that I've been able to accomplish, I, I did not do it because I'm just awesome. I mean, we're all awesome, but you know what I mean? Like, I didn't do it because I'm just that special that only me, like, I'm the only person that can achieve goals or whatever the case is. And the other day I talked about goals um, on my Instagram. I don't know if you guys saw that. And I said how goals really create, uh, it creates cognitive dissonance. It needs to create cognitive dissonance. When you set a goal and the goal is so far out and your life is here, you, your brain goes into this, oh, that is so far away. I don't like that it's far away. I need to figure out how to, how to get this to come closer to us, right? And so as your brain is processing through how to make it come to you, if you're telling people and you're telling people and they're negating everything that you're saying and they're saying, oh, no, don't do that or just get a job or whatever, like whatever, whatever is quote unquote normal to them. Um, if they're saying that to you, then because our brains are cybernetic mechanisms, we start to adapt to what is more normal than what's not normal. So let me explain. So um, an air conditioner right? Your AC unit is a cybernetic mechanism. You set it to a certain temperature and then anytime it's above that temperature, it kicks on to get it to be cool again in your house. So that if it's on 75 degrees, the house always wants to be 75 degrees. So anytime it's not 75 degrees, the AC is going to kick on, right? Our brains are very much the same way. If you want something and it's out there, but your mind is not tuned to a particular frequency of whatever that is, it will always go back to what is normal for you. So if normal for you, I'm going to use this as an example because I'm a business coach, so I have to use this. But if normal for you is working a nine to five desk job where you make $55,000 a year, but you want a, you want to become an entrepreneur, a full-time entrepreneur where you're making $100,000 a year, but your mind hasn't quite conceived of that yet, your cybernetic mechanism is always going to draw you back to the desk job at $55,000 a year, right? So everything in your life that you experience, if you don't push that normal needle more forward, everything you'll start to notice is going to get you back to normal, which is $55,000 a year, right? You have to create your own normal. You have to set the standard. So what's happening is, is that when you're telling people what it is you want to do, like I want to start a business and I want to have make six figures or whatever the case is. Um, and then they're saying, no, bad idea. Don't do it. Just get a job. Say, why are you going to do that? You have such a great job. That's, that's a common one. I get, a, I get that a lot from a lot of my clients. People tell them, but you have such a great job. Why would you quit your job? Why would you quit your job so that you can, you know, do that? You already have whatever. Um, so because you're set on a normal of this job that you have, it's difficult for your brain to start to conceive of the future. So that cognitive dissonance thing, as it's kicking in, so is the cybernetic mechanism. So what I always tell people is, 
you need to define what your new normal is and then it needs to become integrated in your everyday life it cannot just be a dream like a dream that's great we all have them but there's a lot of people in the world who have dreams and i can tell you right now they are sitting on them and not doing anything with it that's that's a problem and that's why i read this statistic the other day um 88 percent of like high level leaders like i'm talking managers directors and people in their jobs are unsatisfied and do not find happiness in their current situation. That's bad. 88%, this is just America, by the way, 88% do not have job satisfaction. I don't know about you, but that is unacceptable to me. Like if I have to live a life, I'm gonna live a life that I like. <laughs> I'm gonna live a life that I enjoy. Uh, I'm gonna do the things that I wanna do and, and I'm going to be completely at peace about that, right? Because the problem is, is that what has been considered normal to so many people um, is we, ex we look around us and we say, oh, okay, so nothing can be outside of this box. And then we accept it as normal for us. And then it becomes an issue and we feel some kind of way when we want something more, but other people don't see the more for us if that makes sense. And a lot of the times it's really because they're in their own situation and you don't have to worry about it. But um, what I will tell you is, is five different things to kind of combat this. So I'm going to get to that in a second. But remember this, that whatever it is you want to do, um, I, I never, ever believe that that's an accident. And I think because I live that way, I can every single day do something towards, if I feel like, you know, today, I think I just want to go to the beach and sit there. Like, and I think I'm gonna, then you know what I'm gonna do? Go to the beach and sit there because I'm gonna say to myself, there's a reason why I'm supposed to be at this beach right now. And I, because I just don't believe in coincidence. I don't think that dreams are an accident. I don't think desire is an accident. I don't think that what you wanna do or the goals that you have are accidents. I don't, and none of those things. However, I do think that they need to be stewarded well. I do think that if you've been given a dream or you've been given a goal, that it is up to you uh, to make that manifest. And that is, you cannot put that responsibility onto somebody else because they might laugh at you because they might not get it. Um, and if you knew everything that I wanted to do um, inside of my brain, you'd probably think I was crazy. But you know what? I just look at it as a big fun game that I'm just going to go and do it. I'm going to be like, this is going to be so much fun. That's when I started to look at it, like my life is like fun um, and not, I need to do this. This is what I want. Oh my God, if I don't get this, I'm not going to like, when I started to look at it as a game, things became a lot easier. Um, but the point is, is once again, your version of normal um, may not be other people's versions of normal. And you do not have to justify or explain what your vision or your dream is to somebody who does not get it. And if they, and I know that it hurts, like I'm not trying, it's not easy to just be like, you know what, just ignore them, whatever. That's not, that's not easy to do. Um, however, what I would say is choose very carefully who you allow to speak into your life. Uh, I have a very small circle of friends. Um, and you know, there's only a small number of people that I, I truly, truly allow to, to speak into my life or my vision, or that I even tell people to, right? Because one, I don't need anybody's negative stuff. Like I don't need your stuff to be, I have my own stuff. So I don't need your stuff to be integrated with my stuff so that I don't fulfill my purpose. So that's number one. Um, secondly, uh, I pay really high powered people, <laughs> um, to mentor me and to coach me through this stuff. Right. Be and there's a reason why is be because they are at certain levels, um, with, w in whatever it is that they're doing, whether it's health or fitness or whether it's mindset or whether it's business, they're at a certain level and I need to know, um, what it takes to get there. So I need you to tell me, and then I need you to walk me through it. And then I need you to be on my side with it. Thank you so much, Whitney. Right? Yes, Anadia, define your new normal. So important. Hi, ma'am. Hi, Shay. I forgot. Nisha, hi. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I, I, I know I don't get a chance to go live, but I'm going live at least once a week, henceforth um, for the summer. So I'm really excited. Okay. Number of uh, the five things. Okay. Number one, make sure for, you need to just make a decision to not give away your power. I think that it starts there because a lot of the times, um, you know, we look for so much validation externally. And when your external validation um, is the thing that motivates you, it's not going to be enough to sustain the motivation. You know, it has to be something internal. I'll tell you a story. Um, the other day, and I don't know if you guys saw this on my Facebook, but I posted about Rolex or whatever the case is. And, and then I had a friend who commented about how, you know, he felt so great when he bought his first Rolex. 
Um, and then after he bought the Rolex, somebody said, oh, that's, you made a comment, like a snide comment about like, oh, um, you know, that's so funny because my $10 Timex tells the same, tells time the exact same way. And I had a, I mean, I had a whole dissertation. You guys know I write dissertations on Instagram, like it's my job, but I wrote a whole, yes, Whitney, I wrote a whole dissertation about like, you know, just the metaphysics behind all this stuff, but I decided to delete it. And I, you know, I just answered it shortly. Um, but the point is, is, oh, because after that guy said, you know, like my $10 Timex tells time, just like a $25,000 Rolex, um, he sold his entire watch collection. And my point in, in telling the story is that yes, because if your external validation comes from someone, then someone's criticism is going to also have an equal effect to you, if that makes sense. So because he looked at Rolex as a validation of his success, when somebody came with a negative comment, he also looked at that as, oh God, maybe I shouldn't have all these Rolexes and then sold all of his, his, sold his watch collection. You know what I mean? So you cannot allow somebody else to have that much power over what it is you do. And I would, I would challenge everybody here to take a look at where this is happening, even in the small stuff, because it's not just for the big dreams and for the big goals. It's going to be in the little things. I believe how you do one thing is how you do everything you can start to see um, kind of like these incremental small things. Now it might not be in like, what do you want to have for dinner? No, you can't have pizza. It might not be that, but you'll start to see how you are allowing your power to slip away because you're making decisions based off of what somebody says, does, thinks, perceives, and all that stuff. And when you're doing that, it's going to be very difficult to step into your true purpose because it's, your true purpose is meant for you to stand out. If you're sitting here trying to fit in, well, you can't fit in and stand out at the same time. So you're gonna have to pick one, like, right? Like you're gonna have to either be team normal or team, you know what, I'm weird and this is just gonna have to be what it is. And no, I don't care, right? Um, yes, you can, thank you, Anadi. Okay, number two, um, I am statements. The other day I posted in my Facebook group, I said, if you are not grounded in I am, the world will tell you who you are. Uh, and that is true. If you are not super secure in, in I am's and I am this, I am worthy, I am happy, I am t whatever, I am wealthy, I am all the, whatever it is you want to say, like if you are not grounded in those, every single time somebody says, well, you're this or you're that, you are going to start to adopt those thoughts for yourself. So really number two is think for yourself. Have your I am statements. I have my I am statements. I go through them every single day, so most of the time twice a day, but definitely at least once a day. Um, if I can't say them out loud, depending on where I am, then I will write them out for myself. But, and I'm very, um, I would say I'm very particular about how the I am statements are crafted too. Like they always have to be in the positive and the affirmative. Like, so never have an I am statement that says, I am not fat for example, like don't say I am not fat because that word that not turns it into a negative statement. So instead of saying that you might want to say I am operating at my highest level of health and wellness or, or whatever, right? So you see how that's more affirmative. Like that is, that is a more positive statement. So I am statements, no less than five. Um, and I would venture to say, you know, no more than 15, like five to 15 is kind of like the sweet number. Thanks to Nadia for writing this down. This really helps. Yes. Think for yourself. I am statements, write them all out. What are you right? Like I am what, what do you think about yourself? Um, and then really dive into what it feels like when you say it to yourself. Cause sometimes people can say things like I am a successful entrepreneur working in my business full time, right? That, that can be an I am statement, but they don't truly feel that way. And so when you don't feel that way, then you're not really feeding the frequency. So you have to change the way that it's written. So instead of saying, I am a full-time entrepreneur, you might want to change it to say, uh, every day I am working towards becoming a full-time entrepreneur, because maybe that feels a little bit better because you, you're seeing the evidence of that on a daily basis versus I am a full-time entrepreneur making six figures and you haven't even made a dollar yet, you know? So think about how you're writing the statements. Number three, take divinely inspired action every day, because it's one thing to write them out. It's another thing um, where you actually are going to have to you know, do something because faith without works is dead. So we're going to have to, you know, put a little muscle in the hustle, so to speak, and get some of it done. So if you're, I had a client one time who was not very good at time management. And so, you know, one of the things that we did is we wrote out her affirmations and really helped 
write them out so that she feel, felt good about them, about her time management skills. Um, and then the next week I talked to her and I said, okay, have you been saying your I am statements? She was like, yes. I was like, okay, great. What have you done? And she was like, nothing. And I was like, okay, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> like you can't just say the I am statements, but not move forward, like not do something, right? So if you're telling yourself you become better at time management, then you should probably take inspired action every single day, whether that's every day I'm going to look at my calendar or every night I'm going to make a to-do list or something like that. Like make sure that you're putting forth the effort um, because your work or the effort I should say should be in favor of the desired outcome, right? Like we should be putting forward effort Oh, sorry. I'm filming up there. That's why I'm like, is this working? Um, should be working towards, right? Like what it is you're wanting to see. So keep that in mind. Number four, this is something that I have had to learn is um, practice selective hearing because sometimes people's opinions, I don't really care very much for. Um, so I will just not listen, you know, like, so some people are very valuable to you. Um, they have great things to say and they can speak life and speak, um, you know, joy to you and happiness. And they are champions of what it is you want to do. Great. And this is not, you know, only hear what you want to hear because sometimes con criticism can be constructive. Um, but what I'm saying is, is that there are other people in your life who have really, they don't know you very much. Like the strangers that are commenting on your posts on Instagram or on YouTube, like the trolls that are like, don't take that stuff to heart. Don't take it as like, well, this is, this is who I am now. Or yeah, that person's because really they don't know you. They don't know your heart. They don't know anything you have to say. And I've experienced this um, and I've had to work through it, you know, myself, because sometimes people will say things and then I'll, you know, for a couple of days, I'll be like in my feelings about it. But, you know, I use my own tools and, and I move past it now um, a lot quicker now than I used to um, because I just operated that certain, you know, I just have moved to that level. Um, but don't let every single person speak into your life. And don't even ask for people's opinions for that matter. Because when you ask for people's opinions then you're opening yourself up to, if you're a person that's like really sensitive about things, then you're opening yourself up to the criticism that's gonna make you feel some kind of way. So that's, I just don't ask for people's opinions. I say, this is what I'm doing. And then I just go and do it. Um, when I quit my job, you know, I quit my job. And then I told my, my mom, I said, um, my mom, she lives in the Philippines. So I told her, I was like, I quit my job, mom. Like, it's not a, I'm not asking, what do you think? Should I do this? Like, is this something that I should, and I, you will never really find me ask that question. Like, I'll never really say, should I do, you know, unless I'm asking like, what it is you, you guys want from me, then maybe yes. But um, in terms of when I get divinely inspired, um, I, I, when I should say, when, when I get divine downloads, when I feel like, you know, um, God has spoken to me in a certain way, or I feel really strongly about something. I'm not asking for anybody's opinion because I've just learned that again, people do not think the way that I think 90% of the people in my life, they don't, they don't live the way I do. They don't operate the way I was in a meeting the other day. This has nothing to do with my business, but I was in a meeting the other day and someone legit was like, well, I'm a pessimist. So, and I was like, Hmm. And you're like, that's okay. Like you're, you're good. <laughs> That's the way you want to be. Like you want to be a pessimist. Hmm. You know, like, so the majority of people in my life don't think the way I do. So I just don't, I, I don't, I just don't like there's, there's no point. Cause otherwise I will get to that state where I feel like I have to justify myself. So no. All right. And then number five is, sorry, I wrote them down. Oh yes. Long-term support. And I talked about this in my post. Yes. The other day on when Kate Spade um, committed suicide, because I talked about success management and how social psychology, it gives you the five steps to be successful, what successful people do, um, you know, what are successful habits, seven habits of highly successful people, whatever, the, it'll give you all of that, but social psychology never really studies or offers a lot of resource when it comes to managing that success. What the heck are you supposed to do when you get there? So. Number five is to get long-term support, not from your spouse, not from your best friend, but you need somebody who is an outsider looking in, um, a mentor, a coach, that's what I'm speaking to specifically, who can look at the blind spots, speak into them, and show you how you can elevate and how you can expand. Because I will tell you one thing, I've spent a great deal of money on, um, 
on my education. I spent a great deal of money on my personal development and my coaching. I would never, ever, ever recommend something that I have not experienced myself. And the value of having a high powered coach or several high powered coaches and mentors in your life is critical if you want to operate again at a certain level. I already know this is the level that I operate. Like th this is just where it is. There's I, and to be honest with you, I was even, I was having this conversation with my coach yesterday and I said, I don't really, it's not like I one day said, this is where I want to be. Like, I want to operate at that level. It just kind of organically happened. So I'm glad that intuitively um, I was able to just grow there, you know, on my own without saying, this is where I want to be. This is the goal space. Um, I think naturally things have come into my experience that have caused me to get there. So I love that, uh, but I would not have been able to do it Oh, my camera stopped recording. Hang on one second. Oh, oh okay. I can't reach it. It's okay. Um, I would never have been able to do it if I, uh, if I did not have that, that level of support. If I didn't have somebody that was, you know, going to talk me off the ledge, so to speak. Um, and this, because this is on a regular basis, like it's pretty much daily. And my clients, I have several clients that I talk to every single day. And when you're up, when you're like charging, I had one client who last week had an $18,000 week from Instagram because we implemented a new Instagram strategy. We said, this is what we're going to do on Instagram. And then in a week she got $18,000, right? But she needed the level of support that came with that. We, we had worked a lot before we got to the $18,000 week. Like there was a lot that we had to do on the back end. Another client um, today, she has a $100,000 package. Like that's how much she charges us to work with her. It's $100,000. But she's kind of struggling with like, oh, I don't know, it's a lot of money. Like I don't know how I'm going to do, you know, um, just the mindset that comes with um, charging that much money, you know. And so... Um, for her, it was very much, it was projection, which I talked about earlier in this video. And so we had to do a lot, a lot of, or we're still doing, cause I'll, we'll have a, a Monday like deep dive, but like a lot of work around what that looks like to again, operate at that level because you, you just can't like, um, I don't know anybody. There's no successful person that I know that is in that space that is doing this by themselves. Not a Richard Branson, not an Oprah Winfrey, nobody, um, you know, no one, because it just takes, I mean, it really does take a team. So I would say, get a team around you, have that long-term support because you're going to need it, especially if you don't have it in your regular life. Right. Because if you don't, if there are people who are trying to tell you no and don't do this, um, then it is critical to get that out from from somewhere. Somebody who's a champion, somebody who's going to say yes to what it is you want to do. Um, yes. Yes. Support. Critical. Critical. Take the team. Yes. And you know what I'll say about having a team is that um, it, it frees you up to do the thing that you're really wanting to do. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Dr. Neek. Um, it really does free you up uh, because what you don't want to do is, is worry about the things that you don't need to worry about. Like get the support that's going to help you get over the hump so that you can go do what it is you really want to do. Cool. Um, well, you know, so far this camera up here has not been our friend um, because I've tried, this is my second vlog cast that I've tried to do and it keeps cutting me off. So I'm going to have to figure something out. I need to get my remote. Um, that's what I think I need to do, but Thanks so much for joining. Ooh, it is 118. I need to go. I have an event that I have to go to. Um, it's raining here. I hope you guys are having a really good day. Tomorrow, tomorrow I will come back and I'll talk about branding and brand positioning um, because this conversation is actually a good precursor to branding. And what I will say about that and brand positioning is that do not try and position yourself in a way that is only meant to like appease a certain person or a certain kind of people. If that's not where your brand is, and I find a lot of people doing that, they'll be like really high end. They're like, oh, but there's so many low end people that want, let me charge $97. And I'm like, the heck no. We're not, like sometimes you have to enforce the positioning. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Thanks for joining me guys.